day four, breakfast time. I love that sound. It means the day is getting started. Ah, on the road again. Well, that's the first potential water supply I'm seeing. And it looks very filtered by the... The forests are so overgrown. You haven't a hope of camping inside a forest around here. Ooh, looks like somebody mowed the grass in the guide. It says the grass is really long and the guy had to crawl under nettles and stuff. I think um, I'm coming at the right time because it's actually spring. Good morning, Mama and Baba. Oh, two Babas. That's a little unclear here. Haven't seen a marker in a while, but all trail says I'm going the right way. So <laughs> it is taking several resources to stay on this route. The lovely little hamlet of Balangiri. I'm very slow leaving Balangiri because there are so many little historical treasures and I keep stopping to read the signs. And the, look at this, it's a little grotto. Mum was very devoted to Our Lady of Lourdes and so I think she drew me into this spot to honor her one more time. Okay, that was a little tricky. <laughs> when in doubt, pull the map out and uh, found my way. But honestly, there was no indication, no way markers, no clear path. Um, I think everybody has <laughs> chosen their own route to cross this field. <laughs> Is this a posse? <laughs> We're styling. A glimpse of the modern world meeting the ancient lands. So every so often you see these monolith rocks and presumably go, they go down almost as deep as they are exposed and nobody knows the true significance of them only that they all face northwest. And I just stopped and got my bearings. And yeah, that one faces northwest. I saw a bunch of them in a giant circle yesterday. I couldn't photograph them because they were interspersed throughout different divided fields with trees and shrubs. But clearly they were in a giant circle spread over about a three acre space, all facing northwest. You can't cross this land without feeling its history, reading its history, and seeing its history. So this is the site of Donald Cam O'Sullivan Barra. He led a thousand soldiers and people away from the invasion of the English down in uh, Glengariff. Where I left a day and a half ago, they did in one day, they got to this spot and camped on New Year's Eve, December 31st, 1602. And unbaptized babies are buried here. Hmm. So may the souls of those babies rest in peace. May the soldiers who have given their lives both back in the 1600s. And honestly, I didn't know the English were trying to get Ireland that early. I thought it all came later. While well, I'm learning, may all those soldiers and those who sacrificed their lives for this land rest in peace. And uh, may those I'm walking for rest in peace. The deer count is up. I just saw two more 
very dark brown and white bums. White bummed deer. I have a feeling this may be the last I see of those big hills behind me. Oh, oh, oh there you are through the bush. And here I go. Good morning. It's day six on the Ireland Way. I'm over a hundred kilometers and uh, just leaving Ballyvorney. Having had a lovely night in the Abbey Hotel, which sounds fancier than it is. Very basic, but hey, I got a basic rate because I just walked in, asked if they had a room for a weary traveler, and they said, actually, we don't. We have tour groups in and we're booked to capacity. So I said, look, is there anything like a staff room that's not being used? I just uh, really need indoor accommodation tonight. He said, we've got a room that's closed off because the toilet's unpredictable. I said, look, I've been going outside for the last five days. I'm fine with an unpredictable toilet. It worked well enough into the night. Stopped working this morning, which was fine. I just went down to the lobby, had a massive Irish breakfast again. <laughs> And I'm on my way from Ballyvorney to Mill Street. I need to find an optician to address my broken prescription glasses. I need to buy sunglasses and I need to get some proper food updated in my pack. And none of that was really available in Ballyvorney. So moving on to Mill Street. Bye bye Ballyvorney. Hello cattle fields. There was a bull warning sign. It made me so nervous I didn't even take a picture. Problem, the N22, that's being turned into a freeway. Yeah, it's a hard close. Like, I was wondering why is the trail so overgrown? There's no maintenance. Doesn't seem to have any recent footsteps. Lots of brambles pulling at my pant legs and some downed trees not removed for ages. Well, it's cause this, it, it's closed. So this is where I shouldn't have turned right. Should have just kept on going. Oh my gosh, there is a sign here. See, and I was looking at the pretty tourist signs. I should have looked at the highway construction notice sign right there and then just kept on going down the main drag from the Abbey Hotel to here and I could have saved myself. I think I've walked almost an extra three kilometers up the hill to the closure and back down. Now my day is starting. And so there's the new N22. I'm back on trail on the other side. About an hour and a half added to my journey, but it's my own fault. Hiker error. Read the signage. Read the signage. Read the signage. So pleasant. It's just one sheep pasture after another. Crossing my first cow pasture. They're watching me. I'm out of here. There's no clear path. It's like wherever the cows and sheep have walked have sunk the land. And then these big mounds themselves are pretty soft. Um. Oh, there we go. Oh, this is nice. Yes, I like that. Well, I'm after nearly drowning in up to my ankles in bog, but it's lovely and dry again. And that's the Ireland way. It really is a gorgeous trail. And I'm amazed with the amount of private property uh, farmers are allowing us 
access to for this trail. So a really great amount of thanks goes to the private landowners who are allowing access for hikers to walk and appreciate the land. I finished the first section of the Barrow Way that, follow, that the Ireland Way follows, the Muscari Way, and now we're starting the Northwest Cork Way. And uh, what do we have here? A style to be? Well, first time for rain gear in six days in Ireland. <laughs> That's not bad at all. Man, these things are massive. Can you hear it? It's like, well, it's like a jet propeller. Well, finally leaving the wind farm behind. That took about two and a half hours, man. And now, now we have a boardwalk. Well, I think every bog should have a boardwalk. This is very nice. It's um, a little broken here and there. Well, this is Sheila. Hi. Sheila who? Sheila Murphy, <laughs> a distant relative oh, to be sure. Yeah. And Sheila has stopped me from going over Clara Mountain. She said, don't go that way, come this way. Oh, this way Twisted my off. arm. Yes, a nice night yes. off in a real bed. But yes. I really appreciate Sheila's kindness. Now this is true Ireland hospitality. And she's taking me home to surprise her husband exactly. with company for the night. So thanks very much, Sheila, very for welcome. having me. All right, this is Dennis, and poor Dennis took a tumble on his bicycle. What happened to you? Yeah, I was cycling, and uh, I had clipped in. I, I clipped into the pedals, and I was uh, going elevate on, on a hill. Then uh, my legs slip out of the, of the clips, I... and, and, and with the force, it hit the side of the, the pedal. Well, I went to the hospital this morning, and uh, they told me to elevate it. They x-rayed it, so it's not broken. Thank you.